Rahul, let me ask you this. You know, of course, the window to all of this action are our screens, and uh, especially our television screens, and it's 24-7. Um, uh, tell me how important is the, the news genre when it comes to sort of, you know, getting the attention of audiences, making sure they're listening to the right things, um, as well as, and like, you know, tell me a little bit about the kind of content that sticks. You spoke about, you know, we, we heard Ajay talk about how they want to not just advertise, but be part of a conversation. So give me that perspective from, from you. That's a very good question, actually. I, look, first of all, let's just situate this election. This election is a pivotal election in our history. So there's a lot more interest, you know, a lot of people say, oh, because the outcome is foregone, there is not that excitement. But actually, no the outcome may be foregone, some people say, mm -hmm. in the aspect of who's winning, but it's certainly not foregone on where we are going to go as a nation. So, you know, till now, for 75 years, we've written the history of India. Someone now says, hey, I'm, elect me prime minister. I'm going to script the history of Bharat's itihas. Completely different. They sound different and the focus is different. So, first of all, let's understand what this election is about. This is about a pivot to a part of our country that we actually squirreled away mm -hmm. and never looked at. And there's a huge amount of people in that quadrant um, that are aspirational, as you know, he began by saying, and are looking to be heard. So... A lot of Indians today are not wanting to hear me during election season. Yes, when there's a big controversy, there's been an arrest of a big politician. There's been one about a couple of weeks back. There are seizures that are taking place of certain political parties, monies, etc., etc. And people, OK, will turn to an anchor. And if the anchor is in the business of giving hard facts, they'll say, OK, what does this mean in the larger context of how it's being mm -hmm. sort of played out by various political parties, what are we supposed to make of it? So they'll come to me. But actually, they want to hear what the people want to say. And that's where programming needs to focus. It has to take people who are sitting in their living rooms, who come back home, out amongst the people. Mm -hmm. So all the IPs that you create at this time are about being amongst the people. Now, you have various versions of it. Mm -hmm. You can have nukkar shows, as they're called, or you can hit constituencies, or you can have these massive sort of staged events where there's a huge live audience and you do it in the square of a town or a village or a jurisdiction where you can have that interface. Uh, you go out with politicians mm -hmm. to stand behind them to see how they're looking at a particular constituency. The camera is really over their shoulder, so you get a view of what they're looking at, how the people are reacting to them, what is their messaging. So it's really about immersion. Immersive, yes. The other thing that one has to keep in mind, and I'll be very quick, is that it's not just anymore the 32-inch box. Mm -hmm. So there, is, there are people out there who have sometimes as much viewership as an anchor on a traditional news channel. Mm -hmm. And they're doing something completely different. So not only are they building perspective, but they're also amongst people in a manner that you, as a professional journalist, can't be. Mm -hmm. Because you are ascribing to certain standards. They're asking questions which perhaps I would be too wary of asking, but they're really getting into those questions that feed into various prejudices. People like to hear that kind mm. of chatter. You have a lot of little IPs that go on digital only. Mm -hmm. And then you have the traditional sort of news programs where you go out and you do your shows and, mm -hmm. you know, it's more structured, etc. So that's the kind of stuff that we do. True, absolutely. And what I'm also getting, of course, in marketing terms is that customer centricity, right? Absolutely. You don't yeah. lose that. Um, so, Gaurav, for you, again, I'll, you know, when it comes to, you know, some of the things that Rahul mentioned, Ajay mentioned, Mohit mentioned, in fact, also, um, how do you see screens, you know? Absolutely. It's, it's television, yeah, it's digital, um, but that news, that constant sort of churn of news and the number of, uh, you know, perspectives out there, conversations happening out there, how do you sort of, uh, you know, sift through all of that? Yeah. So, um, before I begin, I think, Rahul, you should consider a career in marketing. For <laughs> sure. um, uh, okay. But, okay, seriously, uh, on, I think it's, as marketers, it's our responsibility 
and especially as leading marketers, we, it's our responsibility to follow the consumers. And no doubt about your previous question, no doubt this is going to be a festival like, unlike any other. Mm -hmm. other. And therefore, it's, um, so news, news definitely makes sense from a media strategy perspective. It's how you activate mm. uh, through several options that are available. And what is the purpose behind activation? If that's very clear, I think uh, news will definitely have a role to play. Now, how do you uh, put the big lens? So let me start at a 50,000 feet level. I think if you have to view this season, the three months that are going to come in, um, it's going to be relentless from a marketer's point of view mm. because there would be those large moments, the large narratives that Rahul was talking about, where which are going to be in focus and going to be in the moment real time. And then there are going to be sustenance, which are the micro-marketing, as I call it, which you would want to circle back as a marketer mm -hmm. because those moments, like today, if a very simple narrative, you see something on television, uh, by the time you realize this is the moment, aha, in the next one hour, that edited piece, that small bit of information flows through your WhatsApp, at least 25 groups, right? And therefore, it's going to be a large narrative on how you capture that through the media plans that you build, through the excessive planning that you do. But it's also going to be about moment marketing on what you can capture right after and then circle back. And really leverage so that, you, that. And yeah. really leverage that and build a sustenance piece around it. Mm -hmm. And both these have to be operated like in marketing words, we call it the war room. So mm -hmm. we, we literally operate a war room of three months so that we can capture both those. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could say, be in a position and say that we capture everything that's possible and this thing, but we are obviously humans mm -hmm. and um, we, every passing year, every election year, when such two large campaigns are happening, there is a learning curve and you try and bring all of your learnings to this to make it a successful yeah. Absolutely. I have a slightly different take to that. Uh, and it's no, no wonder, I think, uh, you mentioned going outside and I think most times what you see in news is, right, the warring boxes kind of stuff. And ratings go up when you go to the masses, right? Yeah, some, somewhere, some correlation there. But I think different conversations are happening at different levels. One is you have the political parties kind of stuff. You're looking head versus head. You're looking party versus party. You're looking the maths. Uh, What's the conversation? Rather than look at it purely as an opportunistic point where audience interest goes up, I think you've got to stand back and possibly ask yourself a question, what's the narrative that you want to dial up? Mm. Marketers want to do that, right? What's the, what's the piece that you want to accentuate and what do you want to tag yourself to? Rather than just say, okay, it's, there is a lot of noise and let me be present where the crowd is. Mm -hmm. I think the piece is, it's a great opportunity. Each piece, each IP, each conversation that media has, I think it's a great opportunity for you to think through what, so rather than be part of the conversation mm -hmm. uh, that this great country has, rather than saying, okay, there are just ad rates and so on and so forth. I think it, we've got to be slightly more strategic as to what level of conversation and mm. what tenor of conversation do you want to attach yourself to. True. That, I think, would be far more productive, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. is the take that we take mm -hmm. kind of stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, extremely, Absolutely. extremely, I think I resonate with him, what, whatever he said. In the, in the act of it, I think brands should not forget the purpose that they are trying to fulfill. The narrative, like we all call it, uh, love to call it, the narrative that we want to set. Mm -hmm. I think if the brand purpose is pretty clear and we keep going back to it again and again and telling that to ourselves, we don't get lost in execution. Mm -hmm. So setting the brand purpose and, and, and taking this as a right platform to amplify that. It's so, foundational. So for example, yeah. uh, just giving a kind of a little uh, brass tacks to this. We just launched a campaign a little while back, Baniga to Badega, mm -hmm. right? Because the insight that we got there was that, I think, infra or development of any nature, I think the unique position India is in resets, not for you and me, not for people in the studio, but for villagers, for people who are running small businesses, uh, it resets what's possible for them. Mm -hmm. Now, that kind of conversation is what you would want elections in this country to be about or choice making and democracy to be about. Uh, and that's, that's I think, far reaching rather than just yeah. maybe the immediate 
uh, event mm -hmm. or or the maths that goes true. around. Yeah. True. True. First, I I and agree with him. Yeah. On on you know purpose being central, and mm -hmm. I, in my view, purpose is the fifth P in marketing today, and very very relevant. Unless you have purpose in anything that you do, the campaign will not stick. In at Havas, we call it meaningful uh, communication because. Uh, uh, we realize that unless a brand is meaningful, tomorrow the consumer would uh, would uh, switch you know, out of change it. and switch out of it and and take some other brand. Uh, so uh, while doing this, I think the purpose and the meaningfulness of the communication has to be kept in mind because let's not forget that news is also very volatile. Mm -hmm. So you know we, you have to be very careful of where of your brand communication is, yeah. and that's where you know I would agree with him on scheduling. Very simple things on a negative day of uh, on a day of negative news, mm -hmm. maybe the brand doesn't need to be there. On a day of positive news, the brand needs to be there. Dial right? it up. So yeah. to dial yeah. up. So so it's a very tactical mm -hmm. uh, Real aspect, time. and yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. he spoke. About about you know uh, how the il election campaigns and mm -hmm. uh, keep changing. Similarly, the brand campaigns also during elections have to change. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to be on the on the you ball. Have you have to be on the, the ball. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's a great note to end on, Mohit. Your point about purpose, of course, being pivotal uh, as uh, as you know the br brands advertisers leverage this large epic moment in our history. Um, thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. It was lovely chatting with you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.